Shalom, y'all. It's Brother LeVar back again, again with another topic. And I just want to address uh, Brother Raheem 4411 real quick on a video he had posted after me and my brother in Christ, Brother Antoine, had did a class on Debate Talk for You on Fringes. And um, it's amazing that a lot of people want to just attack, 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 and not realizing the errors and what they're saying. Uh, I don't have any ill feelings towards the brother. I think that he's honest in what he believes, and I can appreciate that being a man of faith. But I have to disagree with the way he critiqued and the way he interpreted the Bible. A lot of times we, you know, veer off into these other religions or we brought up in certain religions and we're taught, taught certain things about uh, other existing religions and we tend to mess stuff up because we have a bias. And that's all I think is going on ever since... Um, I uh, came in contact with the brother on YouTube. All he does is attack the Bible, but that's all right. So we're going to get this started without further ado in Deuteronomy chapter 4. And we're going to pick it up at verse 5 because basically what I, what I could gather from his video, he was basically trying to say that uh, Moses was indoctrinating the children of Israel with the Egyptian religions. And, you know, I just think that's funny because he used the fringe to prove that. And I, I'm an open-minded brother. I sat back and listened. But, you know, the thing that struck me was, you know, if you think about it throughout history, different nations shared a lot of different things and had things in common such as dress apparel or, you know, different nations uh, had other things in common, such as a temple for their God, uh, the fact that they sacrificed to their God. They, you know, uh, today different nations share their technology, such as cars, you know, cell phones, video games, computer, computer hard drives, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, but this brother is implying, since Moses was in charge, he was indoctrinating the Israelites with basically Egyptology. And when I, you know, studied Egyptology, I really didn't see uh, anything that seemed to be the same to me. I'm just being honest with you, you know what I'm saying? As far as the Egyptian religions, they, they do things such as like spells and things of that nature. It's like, you know, God spoke against all this stuff when it came to his law, statutes, and commandments. But we're going to go to Deuteronomy 4. We're going to pick it up at verse 5 real quick. And it reads, Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me, that ye should do so in the land whither ye go to possess it. Keep therefore and do them. For this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall hear all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. We're going to skip down to verse 19 because this is Moses basically commanding obedience to God's law to the Israelites, right? And, and it says here in verse 19, Unless thou lift up thine eyes unto heaven, and when thou seest the sun and the moon and the stars, even all the hosts of heaven, should be driven to worship them and serve them, which the Lord thy God hath divided unto all nations under the whole heaven. So we see here right now, that is real plain in God's law that God does not accept worship of any sun gods or moon gods or anything like you. You see things in the sky such as the stars and all these hosts of heaven don't worship them. You, you're supposed to worship the creator, not the creation. That This is plain. But what the brother did is he went to Malachi chapter 4 when we were talking about the prophecy of Jesus Christ having uh, healing in his wings. What he wanted to do was associate uh, sun god worship with that verse. And Malachi being a true prophet of God, I would never, ever think that he was implying that uh, the Israelite nation should serve in sun god worship. I just don't believe that because I believe Malachi was a true prophet of God and the true prophet of God would never promote that. Malachi understood the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High God. 
you think he didn't understand uh, the Most High's word? I mean, this this is simple. But when you're just so eager to attack the Bible, you'll just try to associate things when you see certain words. You try to associate it with other religions. And you got to be a little bit careful when you do stuff like that. Okay, like I said, different nations shared a lot of different things. As far as the fringe, okay, yeah. Okay, let's say the Egyptians wore fringes, and I don't doubt they did, okay? You know, in the artwork that the brother showed on his video, it, it wasn't uh, worn as commanded by Yahweh. I mean, the fringe in itself is just dress apparel. So you got to understand that I, we weren't saying that the fringe didn't exist. Only thing that we were breaking down was how God commanded commanded the Israelites to wear them on the four cor four corners of the garments. That's all we were saying. This is what God commanded. We didn't say that uh, other nations didn't wear them, but that doesn't mean that the Egyptian nation indoctrinated the, the, the Israelites in their worship of their gods because the things that the Egyptians were doing, it was forbidden by Yahweh. That's clear from Scripture. We didn't already read that. But what I want to do is uh, go to Acts chapter 7. And a lot of Israelites, I don't, I, I've seen where Israelites refuse to even read this and reject the whole New Testament simply because of Acts 7 and 22. And it says, Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was mighty in words and in deeds. And that's understandable because he grew up as a prince in Egypt. But guess what happened? Yahweh spoke to him. And Yahweh was telling him to tell Pharaoh, let my people go. And once all that happened, God gave Moses and the Israelites a whole nother standard of living. So, yes, Moses was learning all these customs, but that don't mean he practiced them and taught the Israelites because Moses understood that if he had done that, that means that he was rebelling against the Most High Yah. And he already knew the consequences of doing something like that. I believe if you read the Bible and Moses didn't, um, Moses was supposed to circumcise his son and his wife harried up and did it because the Most High was about to kill Moses for not doing it. So you got to understand, Moses understood going against God's word, okay? He understood the repercussions of going against Yahweh. And he's seen what happened to the Egyptians when Pharaoh stiffed his neck and went against the Most High. So he's, Moses seen the power in which Yahweh had. So why would he knowingly go against that being a true prophet of God? Like I said, a true prophet of God is not going to tell you to take part in sun God worship. But I'm going to go to uh, 1 Kings real quick. And we're going to read. Chapter number four and verse 30, we're going to learn about King Solomon real quick. Because I'm getting so sick and tired of these guys jumping up talking about the Israelites were copying uh, the Egyptian religion. When Yahweh gave them more wisdom than the Egyptians. And we're about to see that right here. It says, 1 Kings 4 and 30 says, And Solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the children of the East Country and all the wisdom of Egypt. See, this is one thing that I will admit. Egypt through, is known for their wisdom. This is, this is a historical fact. But, you know, when you read the Bible, it tells you plainly that God blessed Israelites with wisdom also. And it says here that he blessed Solomon, a king of Israel, with more wisdom than, than the Egyptians. So there is nothing that the Egyptians is doing that Israelites feel they have to copy unless they want to go against God's word. That's what you got to understand. But I'm going to go to the Quran real quick because the brother, you know, I like, I like Rahim actually because he's one of those patient brothers that, that does read the Bible. I just have a problem when he rips stuff completely apart. But I'm going to go to Yusuf Ali's translation of Surah 3 and 84 and it says, Say, we believe in Allah and what has been revealed to us and what was revealed to Abraham. 
Ishmael, Isaac, Jacob, and the tribes, and in the book given to Moses, Jesus, and the prophets from their Lord. We make no distinction between one and another among them. And to Allah do we bow our will in Islam. So basically, the Quran is saying that, you know, they believe as Muslims in the Bible. It, it, it said Ishmael, Isaac, Jacob, and the tribes, and in the books that was given to Moses, which is the Torah, and Jesus, and the prophets. When you talk about the prophets, Malachi is one of the prophets that it's talking about. So, you know, th this is the problem. You can't go into the Bible and try to discredit what's written when your own Quran is telling you that you're supposed to believe in the prophets, in Jesus, in Moses. So, you know, I understand that you want to tear down the Bible, but when your own Quran tells you to just believe it, you know, that's, that's ridiculous. You can't do stuff like that. Surah uh, 6 and 115 states, the word of thy Lord doth find in fulfillment in the truth and in justice. None can change his words, for he is the one who heareth and knoweth all. Again, your Quran does not tell you that the Bible has been corrupted. Nobody can change God's word. You can have like mistranslations and little things like that that describes what might have messed up in different uh, text and everything like that but that doesn't take away the doctrine in which the Bible teaches and the Bible teaches that Jesus Christ is the light of the world that's that's one of the main messages of the Bible this whole Bible is about him period so what we're going to do is without further ado we're going to go to Malachi chapter t uh, Malachi 4 and you know I, I just couldn't believe that this brother did what he did, and I'm going to point that out in a second. But, you know what, in fact, before we go there, I want to show you guys some uh, false gods that I ran across. You got Garuda, which is a Hindu goddess. She's the Hindu bird god associated with rays of the sun, and notice she has wings, and all these uh, deities, I'm going to show you, they have wings, okay, and a lot of them are affiliated with sun god worship. Even though it's a goddess, it's still a goddess of another nation that is associated with wings and rays of the sun. Now, here you have Ahura Mazda, which is an Iranian god that was worshipped by the Persian king Darius I, who reigned in 522 B.C. to 486 B.C. Okay? I want you to understand that all these other nations round about Israel had sun deities and sun gods that they worshiped. And the brother was right when he said that Israel had fell away and was serving these gods when they were going against Yahweh's word. But Malachi wasn't one of those. The Bible doesn't bear record of Malachi doing that. It was other, it was like in, in every nation of people, and I'm quite sure the brother can agree with this, you're going to always have people who um, fall away and serve other gods. You're going to have that in, in every nation, whether he's a Muslim. A lot of Muslims put down the Quran and they, and they put their faith in Jesus Christ. A lot of Christians, okay, will see a video like the brother put up and not understand their Bible and fall away and, and reject Christ because of it, because of the lies. You understand what I'm saying? So it, it, it doesn't matter whatever country you from, you got people that's always going to turn their heart away against whatever popular God there is. And a lot of people come to what they perceive as the truth. You're going to have that. And Israel was no different. Israel was knee deep in idolatry. The brother is absolutely right about that. But to imply that the prophet Malachi or his scribe was writing that this is the way. This is what we're supposed to be doing and try to make a pagan connection to what is written. As far as the prophecy concerned in Malachi chapter 4, that's, that's blasphemous. But you see here uh, the Egyptian god Horus with wings and the sun disk. OK, there's there's no shortage of information about other uh, deities 
in this world that was worshipped by different people who had wings and associated with, you know, the sun. You have here Utu, a Mesopotamian sun god with wings. Okay, this is what you have in different cultures. It's not just Egyptian culture. See, that's I'm trying to point that out for you guys. It's not just Egyptian culture. And he was just trying to make a distinction or a connection between Egypt and the Israelites simply because Moses was a prince in Egypt. But Moses put that stuff away. Here you have Anki, another Mesopotamian or Babylonian god. Okay, so, you know, and, and, and to break it all the way down, I mean, this stuff started in Babylon anyhow. And if I'm, if, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, Yahweh told Abraham to get away from Babylon because of the false god worship. And, and Abraham is the father of our faith, okay, the ones who serve Yahweh. The one who wears the fringes, okay? He he is the father of our religion. But I want you guys to pay attention to what uh, Brother Rahim did right here. And, you know, I couldn't believe what he did. And, and, and to be quite honest, I thought it was really deceitful. Check this out. He, he shall have healing in his wings. So what we need to do is, we know Jesus Christ healed, okay? That's that's not a secret. But it said he shall have healing in his wings. So what we need to do is look up that word wings. No, we don't need to look up the word wings. Everybody knows what they are. Let's get into this deeply. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I thought that was very underhanded, you know, we don't have to look up that word wings. Everybody knows what it means. No, everybody doesn't know what it means. Okay? You, you, what basically what the brother did was he just looked at that word wings, found some Egyptian art with false gods on it that had a sun disc, and then just tried to mash them together. But that's not the way we study at ABT, and we look up words. We're going to go to Malachi. Chapter 4 and verse 2, and it says, But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the star. Now, dealing with that word, first we're going to deal with, we're going to do it uh, like this. We're going to look up the word Son, and of course, that's 81, 21 in the Hebrew, okay? And the word is Shemesh, which means a sun, sun rising, sun rising, east, sun setting, west, as a direction, openly, publicly, or in other phrases. So, just the sun, the star in the sky, okay? Now, there are two ways or two train of thought in which I've heard people teach this um and the first train of thought is dealing with the aramaic language because we know that during this time we already know that the israelites had came out of babylon okay and we know that they developed the aramaic language as part of the dialect in the way they spoke we know that from history we know that from the bible and that's clear so, what I want to do is, I want to go to the Hebrew word, shamash. Now, when you go to your concordance, and you go to 8120, it's going to give you the word shamash, okay? That's what it's going to give you. And... This Hebrew word is not a Hebrew word. It's actually Aramaic. Because like I said, the Hebrews came out of Babylon and they were speaking. And it says here, the root word or etymology corresponds to the root Shemesh, which is that first 
word that I looked up, 80, uh, 8121. So this is 8120, and that first one I looked up is 8121. They both sound the same, Shemesh, Shemash. This is Shemash. And it says, through the idea of activity implied in daylight. And it says here, to minister or to serve. So this is the first train of thought, okay? And a lot of people run with this interpretation of the Bible. But like I said, there's two separate breakdowns that people tend to go to. And that, that breakdown that he gave, that's not even an option as far as, because like I said before, if Malachi was a true prophet, he's not going. He's not going to try to get you to worship sun gods. That you know, and like I said before, his own Quran tells him to believe in the in the uh, books of Moses and uh, believe in Jesus and believe in the prophets. And Malachi is one of those prophets. So how can you sit there and try to connect a pagan sun god of Egypt? with this word sun sitting right here. Some people tend to go this way with it, and it does correlate with Matthew chapter 20, verses 27 and 28, because we, we read that that word in the Aramaic tongue is shamash, which means to minister or to serve. And it says here in Matthew 20, 27 through 28, it says, And whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto you, but to minister and to give his life of ransom for many. Jesus Christ came to serve mankind. Jesus Christ did not come to get glory for himself. Jesus Christ did not come to be gloating about he was God in the flesh, as our Bible teaches. He did not come to brag about his power. He came to serve mankind. That's what minister means. If, if you're sitting under somebody, you know what I'm saying, they're serving you. They're serving you with the word, the truth. They're, they're, they're doing the work, and they're serving you. With the word, this is what Jesus was. He was a rabbi. He was a teacher. He came to serve the people. Now, the second train of thought is, and this is the one that uh, I would go with. Either one is fine to me. I mean, however a person wants to interpret this verse besides the way Brother Rahim did, which was very deceitful in my humble opinion. This second way is when you read, that this um, son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings, that word son is being used metaphorically. And let me get a definition real quick. Metaphor, a figure of speech in which a word or phrase literally denoting one kind of object or idea is used in place of another to suggest a likeness or analogy between them. In other words, figurative language. The opposite of figurative is literal. So in Malachi chapter 2, it's not talking in terms of a physical or literal sun in the sky. And you have um, metaphors all through the Bible. Let's go to John chapter 7, verse 37 through 38. And it reads, In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow Rivers of living waters. Now, Jesus is not talking about real, literal rivers of living water flowing out of your belly. Jesus Christ is speaking in figurative terms. 
He said, he that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living waters. And basically, all Jesus is saying is that you shall, you shall not thirst for knowledge. You will be blessed with it. Um, another one, Matthew chapter number 10. Let me get it real quick. Matthew 10, and we're going to start at the 32nd verse, and we're going to read clear through to the 35th verse. And it reads, Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, which Islam does because they say that Jesus wasn't crucified. We're going to get to that later. Him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I, I came not to send peace, but a sword. Verse 35, for I am come to set a man at variance against his father and the daughter against her mother and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. So Jesus Christ is not saying that he's literally not coming to send peace on earth. He's not literally, he's not meaning that. He's not literally trying to pull out a sword. This is not literal. This is figurative. All Jesus Christ is saying is that within your family, there's going to be people who accept the Jesus Christ of this Bible, and there's going to be people who reject the Jesus Christ of this Bible. I was watching a YouTube video, and on the video, it showed how a mother of the Islamic faith had pushed her son off the third tier in a mall because he chose Jesus as his personal savior and denounced Islam because he, he saw the glaring differences between the two. And he said he wanted to serve Jesus Christ of the Bible. And this is exactly what Jesus Christ is talking about in this part of the passage. He came to bring division because there are going to be people who hate you for serving Jesus Christ, the Jesus Christ of this Bible. And he, he wants you to know that if you choose your family over him, you're not really worthy of him. And that's what it says right here in verse 37. It says, he that loveth father or mo mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. So you got to understand, this man took up his cross. That's what it says in verse 38. He says, and he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. So, you know, th this, this man knew that there was going to be persecution coming from within. Maybe, maybe he didn't know it was going to be coming that close his mother, but I mean, this is what Jesus Christ is talking about. He's not, this is figurative language of the Bible. Okay, the Bible does use metaphors and analogies to explain itself, but a lot of people, I've heard, I heard people in Islam rip this apart. They, I heard, I heard people, you know, critique this uh, part of the scripture in a negative way you know, and tries to say that the Jesus Christ of the Bible is a monster because he's coming to bring a sword, not understanding that it was not literally talking about a literal sword. But let's move on. Now let's go to see what I got here. Like I was saying before, Jesus Christ is the light of the world. And, and this is what Malachi was saying. When Malachi was talking about uh, the son of righteousness arising with healing in his wings, and Brother Rahim turned around and said, we don't need to look that up. Well, we're going to look it up. Since you don't want to be honest, we're going to be honest. Wing here in the Hebrew section of the concordance, 3671, it's the Hebrew word kanaf, which means wing, extremity, edge, border, or corner. So, so basically, we know that the fringe hung from the corner or the borders of the Israelites' garments, okay? And we know that in those pictures that he had depicted of uh, the Egyptians wearing fringes, 
it, it wasn't depicted the same way. So, you know, the brother tried to make it seem like, oh, well, you know, the Israelites are copying off the Egyptians. Well, it's just apparel, you know. You know, they wore turbans and things like that back then. It was a lot of things that the nations around about each other had in common, you know. It's like um, when you think about the technology, like I said earlier, we all use the same thing. Does that, does that mean that I'm serving other gods because I might use paper the same way a Muslim who serves another god because we don't serve the same god by any stretch of, stretch of the imagination? No, that's ridiculous. You know what I'm saying? If I go to church on what uh, the Muslim would call Juma, which is, I, I believe, Friday. I don't want to uh, misrepresent the religion of Islam. And my, if, if I go to church on Friday... Or if he goes to church on Saturday, which is the Sabbath, or Shabbat, does that mean either one of us are serving in each other's religions? Of course not. And I don't mean to ramble. I'm just trying to. I'm just trying to show you guys that you can't just uh, associate words and clothing and or anything. And accuse another people of serving your gods. That's ridiculous. You can't do that. I mean, let's be logical here. But moving on. We know that this was the prophecy of Jesus Christ. Because, like I said before, you can look at that word son and you can use it metaphorically. It has nothing to do with sun god worship. And that healing in his wings, this is a prophecy. And all, and we broke all that stuff down. It's amazing that he didn't address none of that that we broke down about Jesus and having uh, the people being healed in uh, Matthew chapter 14 and so on and so forth, Matthew 14 and 36 and all that. It's amazing he didn't talk about none of that. He just wanted to make a pagan connection between uh, the Israelites and the Egyptians. But... The, the Israelites were, was present when God punished the Egyptians for what they had done throughout the years of their captivity. And like I said, Jesus is the light of the world. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to uh, John 1.1. 1, 1. And we're going to read John 1.1. 1, 1. And we're going to read clear through to the 12th verse. And it says, in the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was God. We believe this word was Jesus Christ. The same was in the beginning with God. We believe Jesus Christ was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. We do believe Jesus Christ made everything through the orders of the father. The father gave him the authority to do this. OK. And without him was not anything made that was made in him was life and the life was the light of men. OK, and the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The, the same came for a witness to bear witness to the light. This light that John bear witness to was Jesus Christ, because John was prophesying about Jesus Christ coming it's because he understood. And St. John understood that Jesus Christ was that light. And the Bible light represents truth, y'all. Okay? It's not literal light. It's a figure, it's figure of speech. It's, it's being associated with truth. Because you got what people call the Illuminati these days. And these people are of the devil. And what they have done is taken a righteous title and used it for bad. The Illuminati should be called the Darkinati. That's another lesson, though. You cannot find anywhere in the Bible where light is associated with evil. But he says he was not that light. Holmes, I'm sorry. The same came, verse 7, the same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. And it says he was not that light, meaning John the Baptist was not that light. Because a lot of people thought that John the Baptist was the Messiah which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, meaning Jesus, and the world was made by him. The world was made by Jesus, and the world knew him not. 
because the world rejected him. We know that. And he came unto his own, and his own received him not. The Jews rejected Jesus. That was his own, because he was a Jew. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So, in other words, if you believe in Jesus Christ, you have been adopted into God's family. While the Quran will tell you that God has no sons, that's a lie. Because God has always adopted people into his spiritual family. This is talking about spiritually, y'all. And Jesus Christ spiritually was the light. He was the truth. In fact, let's go to uh, Matthew. No, excuse me. John 14 real quick. I'm trying not to make this thing too lengthy, y'all. Y'all got to forgive me. Let's go to John 14 and 6. And it says right here, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So Jesus Christ is telling you he's the truth. And light represents truth. Okay? This is this is simple. But when you're so in a rush to just bash the Bible in any way you can, you don't see little stuff. Let's go to the Quran one more time. Yusuf Ali's translation, Surah 4, 171. This is where I believe, no, 172. This is Four, zero, four, 171, 171, yes. This is Yusuf Ali's translation. And this is where the brother went. It says, O people of the book, commit no excess in your religion, nor say of Allah aught but the truth. Christ Jesus, the son of Mary, was no more than a messenger of Allah and his word, which he bestowed on Mary. <clears throat> These are all lies, in my opinion, because the Bible tells you that Jesus Christ was more than just a messenger. We already read that John, John bear witness that he was God, and he was called God by uh, doubting Thomas. And it says, And a spirit proceeding from him, so believe in Allah and his messengers, say not Trinity. Now, you know what? This is another thing that bothered me. This brother went to this, this verse. He know good and well, and, and I know he knows that me, Antoine, any of us that absolute Bible truth, we do not believe in no Trinity. OK, so, you know, if somebody comes across one of his videos and he's talking about me and Antoine and then he comes to this verse in his video, they're going to automatically think that we believe in the Trinity. That is so deceitful, bro. I couldn't believe that. But it says, say not Trinity, desist, which means stop. It will be better for you. For Allah is one Allah. Glory be to him. Far exalted is he above having a son see here we go again uh it says far exalted is he above having a son remember god is a spirit no no christian or no hebrew is walking around saying that uh the spirit that is the most high the spirit that is yahweh the spirit that is the father had physical sex with any goddess to produce any sons we believe that god is a spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth and if the bible says god has sons that simply means spiritual sons it doesn't mean that god was having physical sex with any goddess and it says to him belong all things in the heavens and on earth and enough is allah as a disposer of affairs so you know this basically the Quran teaches of another Jesus because it teaches that Jesus Christ was never crucified and it teaches that Jesus Christ was just simply a prophet and nothing more. Although he had this unique birth that the Quran agrees with, but he was nothing more than just a prophet. Give me a break. How can you believe in the virgin birth and then you turn around and say that he was just a prophet? We believe that Jesus Christ was both God and man at the same time. In other words, God entered into his own creation. Did we say the Father entered into his own creation? No, the Son entered into his own creation because we already read where Jesus Christ created everything. This is what we believe. This is our faith. And seeing that he created anything and he can do anything, he can enter into his own creation. And just because he had human attributes, that doesn't take away from his divinity. But the Quran teaches of another Jesus. This is ironic to me that the brother, you sound like an Egyptologist. I'm going to be, be honest with you. I mean, what are you? Are you you just everywhere with it, man? I mean, 
like I tell everybody, man, I love you. You know what I'm saying? As a brother in humanity, but you need to just, you know, if you don't like the Bible, just leave it alone, bro. I mean, just stay out of it. You know what I'm saying? Like, just stay out of it. Promote your religion and stay out of our Bible and stop ripping stuff apart. But our Bible came first. You know that. And the New Testament was written hundreds of years before what you have in your Quran. And our Bible warned of your Quran. Right here in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 4, it says, For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom the, the Quran does, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit which ye have not received, or another gospel which ye have not accepted, ye might bear might well bear with him. So, you know, take that, you know what I'm saying, digest it, you know what I'm saying, you said what you had to say, I said what I had to say, and like I said, man, stop butchering people's texts. Your religion preaches of another Jesus, and you came on debate talk for you, and I believe that was Carl Albert sliced you up about, um, Jesus Christ being God. We already know what Josh did to you. And as a result of that, you know what I'm saying? It was threats being sent out from other Muslims for even picking you to come on the show to even defend Islam. So, you know, people of your own faith say you you mess up in your own faith and then you want to turn around and 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 mess with ours. My advice is, man, just stay to yourself. Leave us alone. Quit coming behind us, bro. Because, you know what I'm saying? It's... You just messing up. But with all that said, y'all, I hope y'all was edified. Shalom.